Today I'm gonna to have a comparison between a set of Starrett's that I've had for over 10 years and a set of Minitoyos which I've had for a little over a year. One's dial and one's digital. But amongst all of these options that you have, there are still some things to look for when you're trying to choose your own. Some good calibers that'll last you a very long time, you definitely need to think about this and look for some features. I think a lot of machinists and makers know a good caliper brand whenever they see them. Everybody knows Starrett. A lot of people know Minitoyo. There's Brown and Sharp. There's cheaper brands like SPI, which sometimes work okay. But there's a lot of things to look for these days because a lot of manufacturers are making things more cheaply. And this is a pet peeve of mine. Sometimes they cut features that shouldn't be cut. Sometimes they save money on things that can make or break a product. And that's very important because if you're going to spend this much money on something, don't you want it to last forever? You want to be able to trust them for the accuracy, you want to have the reliability, and you want them to be durable. And if you're spending over $100 or $200 on some of these, you want it to last forever, because why would you want to buy these more than once? And you shouldn't have to. I think every manufacturer wants to try to have cost savings, and they always want to make more profit on their products, but sometimes it comes at a detriment to you, the consumer. I work as a manufacturing engineer during my day job, and I know this from personal experience. Everybody's looking to try to save money and make more profit every year, and every year they have to increase that. And sometimes people, meaning companies, make decisions that actually degrade their product, actually make it worth less to people. And sometimes they don't mind this because of the term of planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence is whenever a product is meant to go bad so that you have to buy more. And keeping this in mind, I would have beg you when you're shopping for something useful that you want to keep for a long time, a cheaper option is not necessarily the best option for your wallet because you might have to replace it again depending on how long you need that tool. I was already thinking about doing a review for calipers just to kind of help people shop for what they need because it's kind of difficult to find what you need when you're looking, you're looking through MSC or Amazon or Granger, even just going to Home Depot. If you take your measurements seriously, you should have a good set of calipers. Uh, if you actually machine, you know you need a pair like this. Uh, if you're a woodworker, eh, you may not need to go to that specificity amount. But if you want a set of calipers and you need to buy a set of calipers, there are some things you need to look for. Going cheap won't necessarily be the best option. Going through the website on MSC, which is actually an industrial supplier, they have multiple tiers of calipers that they sell. So they have dollar calipers and they have digital calipers. And the digital calipers tend to be a plastic case. They're housing electronics, so they make it an old plastic case, and they tend to be coolant proof for those of you who are machinists. You have to look for that specific feature, but they make them plastic to help resist fluids and all that kind of stuff to keep the electronics safe anyway. But that's not necessarily the best option either. Some people jokingly call the digital calipers cheater calipers, and you know, take it or leave it, they're actually really great for converting Imperial to metric really quickly. And so that's some strength that they have. And you don't have to think about where the dial is pointing and actually understand what you're reading on the calipers themselves. So it's not that bad. The housing itself is what makes them cheap. So the magnetic reader within the calipers themselves can degrade over time if it gets scratched or ruined. But on the reverse side, if you have a set of dial calipers, it uses a rack and pinion setup to rotate the dial. And if you drop those, they could become uncalibrated as well. And if you've picked up a set of used calipers that have been around for a very long time, the zero might be not be pointing true north, it might be rotated a little bit. And that's because someone's dropped it and had to recalibrate the dial along with the gear because they dropped it and then changed position on track. So they both have their difficulties with that. Electronic can skip and misread and be scratched and mess up over time. The gears and a set of dial calipers can mess up and jump track as well, but they typically last a little bit longer as long as you keep them clean. At least that's my experience. So like I said, I was originally going to make this review about a set of calipers, and then I was using my Mitotoyo set. I dropped them once in a period of a year and a half, and the one time I dropped them, the thumb wheel breaks off. Come to find out that that thumb wheel is actually held on by just a plastic hook. And it has sharp points on there, which create stress concentrations in the plastic. Of course it's gonna break. The part that really irks me is that Mitotoyo is known for their quality. They know that people are gonna drop these. They know that things can break. Now, I know that if they never wanted to sell another set of calipers, they'd make them perfect and people would buy them and never buy them again. But there's something to be said for trying just a little bit harder. And I'm actually really not here to say that one brand is better than the other because honestly, if you look through the Minitoyo catalog, they have higher, 
higher level calipers that are $260 or over $200 that are made of fully metal. And I know that with the inflation we have today, the materials cost a ton and they have to account for that. And that's a very expensive, um, that's a very expensive option. But if you buy the cheaper version, which is upper 100s, like $180 or more, then if they break within a year and a half and you have to buy another pair, you're already at $360. So which would you rather do? Spend the 260 up front or would you rather replace them ad infinitum forever? Without further ado, let's take a look at the calipers themselves and you can see the details that I'm talking about. So they both come with some excellent boxes here. The Minutoyo is pretty, pretty impressive. They've got a nice aesthetic V here. Sarah's got the classical red box. As you open them up, Minitoyo's got a nice form-fitted plastic in there to hold, hold, hold your calipers in place. Does a really good job. Sterex have a nice foam, foam insert to hold everything and they do a pretty good job as well. Okay, so we'll start, we'll start with the part that hacks me off, unfortunately. This is from a thumb wheel assembly to move the carriage back and forth on the device. And you can see you can just rotate it, move it back and forth. If it had the retaining hook on there, it would be a lot easier. So overall, the assembly is pretty nice. It has, I think there's metal underneath here for the main assembly, but the plastic is the outer housing here. And you can see up, you can see up in here where the plastic has broken off, where this little hook, this little hook is broken and it's just straight plastic. It had a brittle fracture right here. And it just broke. I mean, even looking at this, the way it meets up, the sharp corners there, and it's just born to break, in my opinion. Plastic, bad. Stress concentrations, bad. So really, really I was impressed with these calipers until that point. I hadn't really thought about the plastic mating with it. I actually had assumed then in the middle here, it might be a metal hook that would be sandwiched in between these pieces, but it was not the case. But otherwise, the accuracy of the measurement has been great. These are rated to be coolant proof. And so I work around, uh, I work around CNC machines a lot, so I wanted to make sure they were protected. And they did that just fine, but apparently they can't handle a simple impact from one klutzy moment. So I know you're not supposed to drop your tools, but the fact is things happen. So you need to be prepared for that. I highly doubt if I drop my steric calipers that they would do anything but maybe dent or get a scuff on the metal. Maybe the rack and pinion would skip a little bit and I might have to reorient this dial here a little bit. So looking at the steric calipers, you can see what I feel is, um, what I feel is an actual quality setup. This is an entire entirely metal setup it's fully enclosed in a metal piece here metal thumb screws and the most important part to me right now is the metal hook and tang that holds the thumb screw so you can see what it's supposed to look like these are 10 years older than the Mitotoyo pair and they still work and they're great they're excellent calipers and i love them these are six inch length. You can get them in six, 12. I think there's even a four out there. They come in various lengths. Sadly, these were bought over 10 years ago, as I said, and I think they're around $89. Today, they're around $261. I know because I had to get another set to replace these for my work. And so this isn't necessarily a Sterrett versus Mitutoyo or dial versus digital. It's just more of a comparison to let you know what to look for. There are other good brands out there. Like I said, Brown and Sharp, um, in a Toyo, I think SPIs are okay. I had a set that was pretty decent, but they wear out and they get flimsy really quickly. So if you're looking for a cheaper set that's decent, 
you know, and not just a plastic general tool from Home Depot that's crappy and will give you false measurements. If you're looking for something generally precise and generally middle of the road, SPI is not actually a bad brand. Minitoyo and Steriner, however, is supposed to be cream of the crop. And I would argue that Minitoyo failed in this instance. These are at least $200 calipers. I'll put the price up on the video. I haven't currently shot for these because I wasn't looking to buy the same thing. It is exceedingly frustrating in this day and age to have to spend so much money and then all you get is crap. I'm tired of getting disappointed by products that disappoint me. You put your trust in them in a brand and they let you down. I'm not in the habit of buying stuff that's going to break. Now, could these steric calipers break pretty easily? Yes, I mean, but it has a lower likelihood just simply because it's all metal. It's all metal. I mean, there's it, gear, gear housing inside here. If you open this up, you can see you can see the uh, rack and pinion I was talking about inside the piece itself. This is an excellent mechanical design. Should last forever as long as you treat it well. I would say that if you're going to look for a set of calipers, decide on your purpose first. Are you doing woodworking? Are you doing metalworking? Are you machining? Are you 3D printing? Some 3D printing, I would argue you need the most precise calipers you can get, and you would probably want something that would last. If you want to do press fits at all in anything, any material whatsoever, you definitely need to have an accuracy within a thousandth because you need that sizing to appropriately make parts mate with each other and make them stay when you press fit them in. If you're looking for slip fits, it's the same thing. It's within a degree of accuracy of a thousandth of an inch. I'll have to look and see what the metric equivalent of that is, but it's still, the logic still transfers you should still think about this level of accuracy depending on what your use is. If you're doing woodworking, you could be within a 16th, but I would wager when you're doing those bow ties and you need to make something perfectly fit, you might want to measure it a little more accurately than that. So you should have a quality product and you should think twice about it. I would highly recommend these dial steric calipers. And if you don't drop them, these are great calipers as well with the Mitutoyos. I'll put the model number down in the description below. They're both excellent calipers. If you're looking for a long-term investment that's gonna last forever, I would think twice about anything digital like this with a plastic casing. As to how you figure out whether it's plastic or not, you can technically look at the pictures online and you can kind of tell whether it looks molded or not. The Sterrets, you can definitely tell that it has uh, screws. It has screws holding it in for set screws on here. You can see that it's you know ground on here, you know that it's gonna be a metal component if you can get enough information out of the pictures. You know from the back you have screws here. Let me focus on that. You have screws in the back that uh, keep it all together. It's a very refined precision ground instrument and these are great as well. They have you know precision ground backing on here. It's an excellent set of calipers overall. I'm not saying that the is all terrible. They do a really great job and they've been known for excellence for a very long time. And that's actually why I'm talking about this is because I'm disappointed in them. I'm solely disappointed in them. They, they, did, they can do better. That's what I'm trying to say. So really I think the lesson here is just be careful with what you buy. You have hard earned money that you don't want to waste and you want a tool that's going to last a long time. Be careful and look and evaluate. I'll leave a list of calipers I think are really great below. A lot of tools that I would wanna use because I've been a machinist for a long time, they might be more expensive than any maker wants to pay for, and that's okay. Think about your precision, think about your use, and look at the material that the product is made of, and then evaluate your price. That's something you should keep in mind in a day where everybody's trying to rip you off. This is a soapbox I have. I hate planned obsolescence. I'd rather companies just sell us quality merchandise and that's it. You buy a truck, it lasts forever if you want it to. I think you should only have to buy calipers once. They should last forever. There are older calipers on eBay, probably older than I am, which is saying something, that are being resold and reused because they still work. So do you want a tool that's going to last a year or do you want it to last longer than your lifetime? Think about that. If you're like me and you're spoiled and you prefer all metal all the time and you hate spending money more than once, go with the solid metal case. Learn to redial calipers and go online to do conversions if you need metric instead of using the quickie digital version. Another aspect of the digital calipers for the Minitoyos is that it specifies to the fourth decimal place. 
It only measures in half thousandths, meaning it only goes in gradations of 0 0.0005. And that precision is kind of unfounded. If you're gonna go that far into precision, you need to have a micrometer instead. So really the digital is kind of a moot point. You don't need to have that on there. It's just a luxury. And it's, a, it's an inaccurate luxury to say the least. So you need to think about that too. You might say, oh, they're more precise, but it's not really giving you accurate data for what you need. So it's, it's excessive for the tool and it's more gratuitous than anything. Thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time. I hope you found this useful. I've wanted to do some more product reviews of tools that I've found useful over the years and share it with you guys. And if there's anything you'd like for me to review, please let me know. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.